What is up my dashing dudes and darling dames? I am the Hans TV, and welcome to the only subreddit where cheaters try to find the most BS excuses. It's r slash relationship advice. Our first post for today comes from ThrowRA Trophy GF. I, 31 male, told my girlfriend who's a 30 year old female that she is not a trophy wife or status symbol, and that we are similar in attractiveness. She views it as me calling her old and ugly. A bit of background. My girlfriend and I are 30 and 31 respectively. We've been dating for about a year. I work as a high level engineer at a good firm, and my girlfriend works a payroll specialist at a good firm too. I make significantly more than her, three times. Things were good in our relationship until I showed her my retirement slash savings. She now doesn't see the point of working and has started framing our relationship on that. She is the beautiful one, and that I am the nerdy engineer that was lucky to have her. Before, when we met, she was all about making it her own way, eventually starting her own company with her sister in sourcing and recruiting. But now, she jokes about driving a Range Rover and wearing Lululemon and going to yoga. We were having a discussion about this trophy wife stuff, and she brought up that I was nerdy back in the day while she was very popular. I told her that she is not a trophy wife, that yes, she is attractive, but it's not a huge difference between us. I told her had it been the case that I met her when she was 22 and I was in my current age, then sure. But she isn't 22 anymore. After I said that, she just started crying like crazy. She started saying that I think of her as ugly and used up that her best years are behind her. She just told me that if I am not happy to be with her, why am I even here? To stop wasting her time. I tried to talk to her but she was in no state for a conversation. I don't know what to say guys, for me. I just wanted to say that I think we are of similar attractiveness. Like, I don't think anyone when they see us turns their head and is like, oh, is she with him because of the money? Or dang, he is so lucky to be with her. I think it's mutual. She was the one that if anything went after my attractiveness first. What should I do? I like the fact that we both work and I don't want to change that dynamic. And I don't want her to think too that she is above me, that I am so lucky to have her. I wanted to think of us as equals, and in my attempt to do that, I hurt her feelings. What's the next move? From what I can tell, she sees that you make quite a bit more money than her, and thinks that you'll just financially support her and her not have to work. It may be an insecurity thing with her thinking that she's a trophy wife, and that you saying she's not is an insecurity. But on the other hand, you both need to work. I mean, if you have a discussion and say, hey, I make enough money, you don't have to work, and she agrees with that, that's fine. But her saying she's just not going to work because she's now a trophy wife and joking about things like using your money to buy things for her, that's just not okay. Our next post comes from ThrowRA with a bunch of numbers. A little over a year ago, my wife threw a 7 pound salt rock lamp at my head. I am still in the relationship and struggling mentally. This wasn't the first time she had been violent, but by far the worst. We've been married for 5 years and together for 9. I'm 33 and she's 31. The biggest causes for conflict in our relationship are, for one, she does not like my family, even though they have not treated her poorly. She particularly does not like my mother. My mom is a single mother who raised me and my siblings on her own when my dad decided to dip a year after I was born. I am the youngest and family was important growing up. I tried to express this to her, but it had no impact. I've made my wife a priority in our relationship and have respected her needs to the detriment of my relationship with my family. Two, anything that takes my attention away from her, family, friends, dog, hobbies, passions, career, etc. The dog part is especially painful. About four years ago, she more or less had me believing that giving my nine year old dog up for adoption was the best thing to do since I was working 12 hour days and wasn't around to give him much attention. When I did, it created conflict. She, on the other hand, wasn't working and just didn't like him. I wanted my dog to have a better life than I was providing, so I went along as she set up the adoption with a local shelter. I should have known better and it still hurts to this day. Her words on the ride there and how she treated me after still do even more. In my state of grief, she mercilessly mocked me when I was upset, calling me a bad word and said I should just get over it. Not even a month later, she was demanding a kitten. I didn't want her to, as I thought it would be a good time to focus on us and maybe travel more. Well, she got it, and took a year and a half off from work to raise the kitten. There are many more stories that cut deep, 
but this one reached my core. 3. After years of actively trying, we have not conceived a child. She has often expressed how much she wants a child, and it has led to much sorrow that she hasn't. I told her many times that I would get checked out to see if there was anything going on with me. I've read that many times it's on the man side, and I wanted her slash us to have some sort of resolution. She felt it was unnecessary, maybe embarrassed, but just keep trying, so we carried on. However, in one particular argument, she said I was less of a man for not getting her pregnant. Well, that didn't sit well with me, so I decided to schedule a visit with the doctor, which leads us to the event in the headline of this post. The evening in question began a few days earlier when I got my wife on the wrong kind of flowers. I had been preparing for one of the biggest business meetings I've ever had, and was very excited and focused. After the meeting, I stopped by the store to pick up some wine and flowers to celebrate and reconnect. All the store had at the time were carnations. Eh, it'll do. It's the thought that counts, right? Wrong. Apparently carnations were insulting to her. I was cheap and thoughtless. I ruined her night. Well, these feelings persisted for the next couple of days. After a couple of days, there was still tension in the air. I went to work and while there I got a voicemail from my mom saying she'll be in town for a business meeting the following week and she wanted to get together. It had probably been at least six months since the last time we've seen each other. My wife took this particular day off from work and when I got home, she hit me with the, we need to talk. Apparently during her day, she happened to find the specimen collection container I had hidden until I can get to it. She was upset and told me not to do it. How could I do this without telling her? I tried to reassure her that it was okay and it was time we get some answers rather than feeling the way we have been. She was not having any part of it and wanted me to throw it away. At this point, she tried to grab it from me. Rather than continue and escalate, I got up and walked to the bedroom to cool off and hide the container again. A little while passed and it seemed that we had cooled off enough to speak again. She had mentioned many times in the past that she likes to have a week's notice before company visits, and it just so happened to be a week until my mom would be in town. I knew it probably wasn't the best time, but I had no idea it was going to be this volatile. I mentioned it to her, and immediately she blew up, telling me to call my mom and tell her not to come, telling me to make excuses for not seeing her or just don't call back. None of these options made any sense to me, so I told her we're all going to hang out for a little bit and she'll be fine. It didn't seem like that big of a deal. We argued some more and after feeling exhausted from the constant arguments, I decided that I was going to lay in bed and try to unwind. Some time went by and I thought we were going to go to bed and move on from all this. Wrong again. She busted into the room tearing through everything trying to find the sample container and demanded I give it to her. Still lying in bed, I tried to calm her down, but to no avail. She then began to attack me, scratching, hitting, yelling, pulling the covers off the bed. It was getting chaotic. At this point, I rolled away from her to the opposite side of the bed with my back turned away from her. Maybe she'll just stop attacking me. Wrong again. I heard some commotion going on behind me and something along the lines of, your stupid lamp, when I felt a blunt object strike my head near my left temple. I originally thought she threw a full-size football helmet that was near my nightstand. Nope. As I regained my vision, I started to see blood pouring onto the bed sheets and onto my hand. Dazed, I picked up my glasses and looked around to see what hit me it was a 7-pound salt rock lamp that was originally plugged in on my nightstand. I saw that my wife had literally just unplugged the lamp in a rage and intentionally threw it at my head. As soon as she saw the blood running down my head, she freaked out and began apologizing. I grabbed a hand towel to stop the bleeding, then threw in some gym clothes that were laying on the floor, grabbed my flip-flops, wallets, keys, phone, and took off. I didn't have a plan or even know what to do. I was in total shock. I ended up sleeping in my car holding a towel to my head until morning when I could go see the doctor and not be charged a crazy fee, American Healthcare. A few stitches or glue the doctor pondered. He decided glue would leave less of a scar. In that doctor's office, I broke down and told him all that had happened but decided not to press charges. I felt betrayed and humiliated beyond anything I thought was capable. It felt like the deepest part of my being had been violated by someone I trusted. It still does. I want to leave the relationship immediately, but somehow convinced into staying. A year later, she hasn't physically attacked me again. She did refuse to go to my grandmother's funeral, leaving me to make up excuses as to why she couldn't make it. Worst of all, she tried to dictate how much time I spent with my family. It felt like the same old, same old. 
I can't say every day is unbearable. I'm very grateful for the acts of service she does around the house, from preparing our meals, washing clothes, and keeping a clean house. She can be thoughtful and kind. She's even been more encouraging of my goals lately. It's noticeable she's been trying to keep her anger in check, but I'm still uneasy. I still feel like this is a momentary piece and I don't want to be sucked in. I haven't been feeling that myself this past year. I've been very depressed, started drinking too much, and put on about 20 pounds. I went to therapy for the first time in my life and tried to get her to come with me. She refused about a dozen of my requests, and I've given up asking or wanting to do it with her. The therapist basically told me I'm straddling a fence and need to make a decision one way or the other. Either way I choose to go, do it and don't look back. I want more than anything to open my heart and feel light again. If this incident didn't happen, maybe I would feel like there could be a chance to reconcile. I thought infidelity would be the worst thing to happen in marriage, but I was wrong. Domestic violence was not something I would have ever expected to happen to me or would expect myself to tolerate. My heart goes out to all that are going through that or have. She's keen on making it work, but my gut feeling is that it's time for us to move on. Every time I try to open my heart and move on from what happened, a wave of all those hopeful memories come out and my heart closes down. My body feels like it's rejecting a connection to her. I still love my wife, but it doesn't feel like I can or even want to come back from all this and reconnect. What do I do? I never thought I would be in this position. Any advice is much appreciated. To just talk about this infuriatingness, I'm going to go down to the comments from a comment from Coca-Cola 700. Your wife is an abuser. She is a domestic abuser. You are a victim of domestic abuse. I cannot stress this enough how you should end your marriage and walk away. Women can be abusers too and men the victims. The way she is and what she does to you and has done to you isn't your fault. Ultimately this is a lull with her and she will repeat her behavior again and again. Please leave and it is a blessing you don't have a child together. OP, if you hear anything from anything, please get out of this relationship. I know you love her, and I know you want to see the best in her, but she has abused you, and that's not okay. You don't deserve that. Our final post for today comes from Internation Hen. My fiancé, 30-year-old female, does not agree with my 32-year-old male prenup. I'm not sure what to do. Location is Los Angeles, California. I purchased and completely paid off the house I owned before I met her. We've been together for six years. I've let her know from the start of the relationship that this was my house. She has lived with me in my home for the past three years. I do not charge her rent and never have. We split utilities, property tax, groceries, unexpected repairs, house renovations, 50-50. I'm happy the way the house was when I bought it. All the renovations have been either her destroying something by accident or she really wants the renovation and I say okay, that's fine. We are getting married in November. And multiple times I have brought up a prenup for my house to mine, and for both our inheritance to stay separate. Everything we earn once married as a couple will be shared. Typical marriage rules besides the house and inheritance stuff. She has about a million or so in assets and inheritance that she will receive from her parents. I will receive about 500000 from mine. She refuses this prenup. She wants to own a portion of my house. And I don't feel like she is entitled to it and I want to protect both myself and her in the future with this prenup. I love her to death, but I don't know what to do. Every time I talk to her about it, she just breaks down and cries and is inconsolable. Am I being unreasonable? So I'm torn on this one. Because as he says, he bought the house and paid off the house before they got married. So in all legality, that is his property and she has no claim to it. But on the other hand, if you're married, then it becomes y'all's property. So, I don't know. Leave a comment down below what you think this is. Well, alright my dashing dudes and darling dames. That is going to do it for today's episode of r slash relationship advice. I hope you liked the stories and if you did, I'm going to link them in the description as always. And if you liked the video, subscribe, share, drop a like, and a comment down below what you'd like to see me read next. A humongous thank you to everyone who is continuing to subscribe to my channel. I cannot thank you all enough for what you all do for my community. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.